Hi, I'm Kelly Hushin, the editor of the Trade Tech blog. We are here at Trade Tech in San Francisco, and I'm here with Greg Morris, the Chief Technical Analyst for Stadium Money Management. And you just gave a presentation uh, about some of your models that you use at Stadium and just about technical analysis in general. It was very informative. So I wanted to just sit and talk with you a little bit about some of the things you discussed. And if you don't mind, if we could start by you just explaining a little bit about what Stadion is. Okay. Uh, Stadion is a registered investment advisor. Uh, they've been uh, in business previously. The name was PMFM, uh, kind of a tongue twister. They've been in business since the early 90s. Uh, been managing money uh, for individuals uh, in the early part using mutual funds and then uh, started managing uh, mutual funds themselves in 2003 because ETFs became available. And we manage, uh, still manage separate accounts. We manage two open-end mutual funds that are traded and available everywhere. And then we manage retirement accounts, 401k plans, and we manage those through plan uh, sponsors like Guardian, Lincoln National, and Mutual of Omaha. And so we're, we're just, I uh, looked at the paperwork this morning, we're just, we're pushing $5 billion now. So wow, congratulations. It's a serious pile of money. That's great, yeah. So if we can talk a little bit about technical analysis, can you explain some of the tools that are out there uh, for both buy and sell side firms and how this whole technical analysis uh, subject has kind of evolved? Sure. Uh, technical analysis is, uh, is the analysis of price and price derivatives. And there's a lot of different ways that you can use it. And there's there's a lot of baggage tied to technical analysis. I mean, it, you can get kind of esoteric and get into wave patterns and things like that. Uh, I generally stick to the more classical technical analysis, uh, and which is trend following. Uh, there's also pattern identification. Uh, all of those things are valid methods of analysis. I try to, the, Part of technical analysis that I deal with, though, primarily is the analysis that is actionable. In other words, at the end of the analysis, you can make a buy or sell decision. There's a lot of analysis where you get to the end of what you think is the analysis and you're still not quite sure what to do after when you're finished. And, uh, but technical analysis, the real advantage of it is, is twofold. One is it removes the human emotion from the process, and that is so critical. Um, and the other thing is it gives you discipline. Uh, and as I was showing you in there, that if you don't have discipline, you will not be successful in the markets. I'm, I'm convinced of it. And technical analysis just makes that discipline easier to, to have. So what are some examples of something that is an actionable strategy to follow or an actual actionable trend to follow when you're using technical analysis versus something that maybe is a trend you can recognize but isn't really actionable? Good point. Uh, when people say we're in an uptrend, they can say that because they're looking at a chart and they see an uptrend. And so that's that's hindsight that has done that for them. And that's that's the problem. People have it, people have it, they say, oh, I'm, I'm not using hindsight. But they really are. I mean, anytime you see something that's not on the extreme right edge of the chart, it's hindsight that you that's bringing that conclusion. Um, so we, we have, technical measures that are, me that are measuring the market to identify uptrends. And they come over different time periods, and there's different types of technical measurements that we're doing. Price, breadth, and relative strength. Relative strength is like a, a small cap versus large cap, growth versus value. Uh, price, obviously, is the price of, of an index that you want to follow. Breath as advances, declines, up volume, down volume, new highs, new lows. So these, this data then is manipulated mathematically to identify continuing price movements upward. And then everything else sideways and down is, is the residual. And so they, they, these measurements start turning on, if you will, saying this is an uptrend. And as that, it starts building, we start committing assets with very tight stops. So, so that's the process. In other words, it's, it's a rules-based technical model that has nothing to do with subjectivity on what you think about the markets. It's, it's a mathematical measurement of what the markets are doing. And then all you have is an expectation that that will continue.
continue. Right. You said uh, there's no forecasting at all. Right. You said in the presentation that you know you you have to remove the human emotion um, from this, and you have to be able to sort of analyze these things based on the trends that are happening. And you gave an example of a risk based, uh, sort of a risk based example. Uh, I don't want to give away, but maybe you know what I'm talking about, and you could sort of recite it for us. Um, you were you were asking uh, if you had if you had a decision a bet to make. Oh, so to speak, if oh. you could give that one. <laughs> oh, yes. I thought that was a good yeah. example. Well, I, I show statistics a lot, and, and because that's a good way to understand markets, to learn the history and how markets react to certain events, and the statistics help you quantify it. However, I tell people that statistics are not actionable information, it's just knowledge. Right. You can't make a decision based on it. And so the example I give is that um, I say, let's play a game. And I say, first of all, it's a fair game. You have a one in six chance of winning. It's $10 to play. You can play as many times as you want, and you win a million dollars if you win. And it's, you know, with that data, I say, how many want to play? And Everybody raises their hand. Everyone, of course. And then I, I pause a minute, I say, well, it's Russian roulette. And I say, how many want to play now? Of course, nobody wants to play. And all I did was explain the risk of the game versus the statistics. All, I, all they knew before was the statistics, and now they know the risk of playing and they're no longer interested. And, and the point of that is, is that if investors made risk assessments with a higher degree than anything else, they, they generally do much better. Right. So what about the benefits of technical analysis? What does it do for traders uh, when you're using it effectively? Well, uh, kind of like we talked about before, the, the two things that I think are just absolutely critical to be successful in markets is having discipline to follow a technical model. I would say this, there's a lot of different ways to make money in the market, outside of technical analysis and inside of technical analysis. But if you don't have the discipline to stick with it, uh, you're, I, don't, I just don't think it's going to be successful over the long term. Um, and then the emotions. We're all human. We all have emotions, especially when it comes to money. Uh, the human mind just doesn't seem to work properly at the right times because, because of the emotions. You know, when the market's going down, you're scared, you're, you're, you think it's going to continue going down, and it's probably the time you should be buying if you're trying to be a contrarian. Being a contrarian is difficult. So it's controlling emotions and instilling discipline is probably the thing technical analysis does that's, that's above all other types of analysis. What about the future of technical analysis? How do you think that it will continue to be used or start to be used more effectively at trading desks? I, I think the markets will determine that. Uh, we've seen the markets go essentially nowhere in the last 11 years. Uh, all the Financial theories have blown up. Uh, people are turning to something that has worked, and that is technical analysis. Uh, there will come a time in the future when we will see long trending secular bull markets like we had from 82 to 2000. And then technical analysis will still work, but so will all that other stuff. So, financial academia is kind of the marketing arm for Wall Street. So, the, the theories will come back into play. Uh, technical analysis will fade in popularity, but I think it's I think it's growing over time. During all these secular bears, technical analysis tends to grow and attract more interest. During the secular bulls, I don't think it declines, but it, the, the rate of growth of interest in technical analysis subsides. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me and to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, the presentation was very in-depth and very detailed, but you know, this is sort of a snapshot of what uh, we spoke about in there. Sure. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. And we'll check back in with you to see how the rest of the conference goes. Okay. Okay, great. Bye.